Jay's Garage for episode 7 of the VZSS Turbo Build. It's probably been a week and a half since my last video. Uh, we put that Turbo 400 in and you know I was talking a little bit about the tail shaft so today we will tackle the tail shaft. I was going to try and start this yesterday, today is Sunday, I was going to try to start this yesterday on Saturday but I actually had a little trip planned to the Winter Nationals down here at Willow Bank Raceway just west of Brisbane there near Ipswich. You just probably know of the place. It's a it's a national event, it's a pretty big event. And uh, the, the place that I work for actually every year get the sky marquee tables up in the sort of the VIP tent up there which is which is pretty fancy and pretty pretty awesome actually. So you know they feed you all day and they drink you all day. So it's it's a pretty good day. But the best thing about it is you actually get to go on the start line with some of the cars. Now I've been going for a few years now and I've been on the start line with you know, top slammer and top alcohol and stuff like that, and, and I've always just got there that, that little bit early, a little bit too late, sorry, to get my name down to get on for top fuel, but this year I was organised, and I got down there, Sparrow Fart in the morning, first in line, and I actually got my name down and got onto the start line for top fuel. Now, I'll show you a little clip of this, because I actually filmed a little clip of it, and it, it does not justify what your senses feel so I'll, I'll throw this clip in here and you just have a look and uh, yeah very close and and you know you're just sitting there the nitro methane is just burning your eyes you cannot see you, you know your eyes are tearing I had to drop my sunnies down just to keep my eyes open just to try and shield some of that nitro methane and at the same time your nose it feels like it's like cold burning on the end of your nose just the, just burning the absolute crap out of your nose and your throat and I had earmuffs on and it was still super loud and I tell you what when they hit that that throttle and I'm only probably two and a half, two metres away from that zoomy, it, it seriously smacks you in the face. It's the, one of the best feelings you'll ever feel. I, I loved it. I, you know, it's it's like a bucket list thing of mine. And Yeah, I managed to do it and it was just awesome. So I thought, well, yeah, why not share it for you guys and yeah, have a bit of a look at what I got to see. And I definitely recommend it. Like, if you can work your way towards experiencing that, it is definitely a great experience. I'd, I'd, I'd get amongst that for sure. I definitely probably won't forget that in a long time. So yeah, if you love the horsepower and you love it loud, it's just awesome. Alright, that's enough of that awesomeness. Time to work on the VZ. Obviously we're up to doing the tail shaft. And I tell you what, there's just so much more to tail shafts that I've learnt in the last over the last week researching and looking that it's actually it's it's quite amazing. You know there's there's crucial speed and then you're going to work out how fast your car's going to go and everything like that and you know we'll get right into into the finer details of that so I suppose what I'll first do is I'll show you the standard shaft and absolutely how crap 
the standard shaft set, set up are in these cars. Like they're mainly designed for luxury and absorbing vibration, obviously, and stuff like that. But when we start putting power in, like we're going to do this, it's just going to it's just, just going to destroy itself. So I'll, I'll show you these. I'll show you the standard shaft. Now here it is. Here you can see two piece design with obviously the centre bearing. I think it's probably three inch, two and three quarter maybe inch thick. I think it's only very thin, but that centre bearing design, like I don't know if you fellas have ever stuffed around with these Commodores, but those centre bearings flog out an awful lot. There's also a slip slip joint there with a spline, which I think would be another weak point. Centre bearing's a weak point. There's a uni there, it's probably not a weak point, but you know, it's just something else that wears out. Yeah, but these things here, these are the these are the stupidest things I've ever seen. They're rubber, and obviously the shaft bolts through three of the bolts, and then the other three bolts go onto the yoke of the diff, and all the torque and the load gets transferred through rubber. So you can just imagine, you know, giving it a hit and you know any sort of traction, these things just screw up and destroy themselves. And I, I've never had a big powered Commodore with one of these in the back, but I do know that my tunnel, and it's probably not going to be as powerful as this. It's got one in the front. And it's manual and obviously I play around in it. It just destroys those front ones like it's no no tomorrow. Like I'm just putting them in there all the time. So you can get billet aluminium ones, which I probably will do for the tunnel. But for this, for the VZ, I'm thinking just get rid of it all. And I've been talking with tail shaft, the t local tail shaft mob and we've done calculations, which I'll go through. And we're actually going to change to a single piece. Now I don't have the single piece yet because he's still making it. By the end of this video, I'll have it, so I'll be able to show you, but it'll come out of the gearbox, 1350 uni, single 3.5 inch tail shaft, and then we'll go to, I think they call it a 21R uni, which is similar to this one at the back, so also the back of the diff, the flange on the diff will have to be changed. Now we'll go through all that, and I'll go through how we know that a 3.5 inch tail shaft is going to fit, because I've been playing around with it, but I'll take you through that now. Okay, we've shimmied in under here under the SS it's up on that jack stands nice and safe so we can get under here and have a look that there is the back of the turbo 400 coming forward you can see where these bolts are here that's where the center bearing would normally bolt in and then coming back you have the the yoke on the diff now you can see it's that three bolt yoke to suit those rubber donuts this is going to be changed because we're obviously going to change this rear setup We'll go through that more soon, but what we're doing first under here is seeing if we can get a three and a half inch tail shaft to actually fit through here without failing on any of this handbrake mechanism or anything that's in the way. So I find that the easiest way to do it is try and find a bit of PVC or even a bit of steel pipe if you wanted to, to actually dummy up in here just to check for clearance. So I've just grabbed my tape, butted it up against the back of the Turbo 400, measured up over to here and we'll go and cut a piece of PVC to slide up in here to see if we're going to clear. Okay, I've got a bit of 90mm PVC which 3.5 inch um, tail shaft is what 87 or 88mm so 90mm is just a good indicator. I uh, cut it to length tight so hopefully it'll sit up in there and I also cut a little notch in so that the end can slide in it actually goes the other way slide in over the little spigot that normally holds the center of this this rubber rubber donut thing there so that's what that slot is so I can get it in there just from looking around one thing I did know and I think was going to be in the way was the heat shields under there for the mufflers now yeah probably good from the factory but take up a lot of room they sit down off the bottom and they probably take out a lot of room to try and fit this tail shaft in so there's some 10 mil bolts there that hold all that in they're pretty easy to get out pretty self-explanatory so whip them out of there got the tail shaft cut to length now i'm going to get under there and just poke it up in there and give you a look at how much clearance we're looking at using a single two and a half inch shaft now you can see i've slid in that bit of pvc up in there that's it sitting on the end of the diff just sort of got it jammed there, centered up, so it would, would imitate where it would have to sit. You look down and this muffler's awful close, but I'll probably end up using a custom exhaust for this. 
So this exhaust I'm just keeping in there for the time being for starting it up aspirated because I've got some standard pipes and cats and that I'll put in there just to keep it quiet for the aspirator start. So I disregard how close that exhaust is, that's all going to get changed but the most important stuff is over the top, through the centre bearing bit of the tunnels, plenty of room, I've, I've been right around there. And also remember this pipe is a few mil uh, bigger diameter than the actual shaft will be. And you can see on the gearbox there, there's a bit of glare on it but that 90 mil actually slides over the whole nose of that gearbox nicely. So it really does, you know, hold it there exactly where it is and there's plenty of clearance so without a doubt a three and a half inch will physically fit. Now it's not all about just a three and a half inch shaft whether, it'll, whether it will physically fit so alrighty we know the three and a half inch shaft is physically going to fit but there is so much like I was saying there's so much more to tail shaft like I was talking about crucial speed. Now there's only so fast that these tail shafts are actually designed to spin to and be safe without destroying themselves. And then there's so many different factors into, into what makes the shaft be able to spin that fast. Now some of the determining, determining factors are the fact that this, this tail shaft won't actually move in the car, it stays dead still. The, the diff centre is solid and the arms being IRS move up and down so the gearbox, the diff, stay relatively stable so there's no alternating pinion angles and stuff like that. Now that's one determining factor that I did not know about. Also obviously uni joint size and all that sort of stuff is a determining factor and also the the, the material used is all different thicknesses whether you use aluminium, carbon fibre, chrome oly like what I'll be using and obviously the wall thickness all go into determining wall thick uh, crucial speed of the tail shaft. Now, I went online and used some online calculators to get a rough idea. Now, they're only a guide because certain shops have certain different techniques in their balancing and they also have certain different opinions and I would have to say that online the information that I've tried to find is some of the most contradicting information against each other that I've ever seen. Certain brands think the crucial speed of certain sizes should be this and that and it really probably comes down to the person building your shaft or if you can find someone that's got a fair bit of experience in building shafts. So I did a lot of research and talking with uh, the dry shaft shop in the USA about the Commodore because obviously they are renowned and they deal with the 2004-2006 GTOs over there which is the same as our Monaro but with a bit of research I find out that it has virtually exactly the same wheelbase as this and they're dealing with the same suspension, the same drive drive line lengths. So, you know, why not get advice off the people that know? Now I could have got a drive shaft off them, but transporting a shaft off them from the States to here versus getting one made here makes that, you know, price wise unachievable. It's easier to use a local bloke and try and get some information off the guys over there and you know they've been awesome emails to them and some advice off them on what's capable and everything like that they've, they've been super helpful the drive shaft shop over in the USA so with some information off them I've been able to correlate with my local fella and you know he's probably learned a little bit as well and we've come up with a, a single piece shaft that's going to work for this and what I will do is I'll probably jump over and show you some of the calculators online that you can use to get a guide to, to see if it's even close to being possible to to getting the shaft that you, you would like. And also there's some calculators there that I'll show you that help you determine how to get your maximum RPM that your car's going to need. You know, you've got you to be honest with yourself, how much horsepower is your car going to make, what size tyres, what diff ratio and stuff like that, and how to find what your maximum RPM for your tail shaft will be. So I might be a bit fancy and jump over to a screenshot just on Google showing you some of these calculators and I'll go through it so you can play around yourself if you've got different builds and swaps and stuff like that. So we'll get back at it in a second. Okay guys, I've got the desktop, desktop open, ready to take a look at these calculators and get a bit of a screen capture for you. Now the, the best calculators I find to use are the TCI automotive ones. There's plenty there to look at. Uh, the main one that we'll start with, with calculating what we need for the for the tail shaft, is the quarter mile ET and mile per hour by weight and horsepower. Now, if you don't know 
or haven't been to the races and you don't know roughly how much horsepower it takes for your car to run a certain amount, a certain number, then this is a good way to find out. This information I already really know because I've got mates who have similar cars. I know what horsepower they make and I know what mile an hour they trap. So, But it is just a good way to show you how actually accurate it is and it's pretty accurate. I've had mates that run very similar times with this. So I'll go, the first one I want to work out is how much mile per hour my car will actually be able to make will actually be able to trap and that you know that's got to do with weight and horsepower of course so with the VZSS it's in at about I'd say 1850 kilos with the extra stuff that we're going to put in there you have to change that to pounds so that ends up being 4,000 pounds and then also the horsepower is flywheel horsepower on these calculators not wheel horsepower so I, I honestly think that high 600s 700s should be capable pretty easily so I factor in 20 or even 25% loss through drivetrain, so you've got to add that back to it. You get 850 flywheel horsepower. And that is actually pretty accurate. You should be able to do a 9.6 roughly and trap about 140 miles an hour. Okay, 140 miles per hour is the important number there. So really maximum speed that my car is really going to do is probably... 140. I don't really plan on going on the highway and doing any faster than 140 miles an hour or roll racing you definitely don't get to 140 miles an hour either for where I go anyway on the racetracks I go so roughly 140 miles per hour is the is the maximum speed that my car will see plus or minus a little bit all right now to the next calculator same thing TCI racing calculator we'll just change pages it will, which it's not. Do not know why. There we go, changed. The next one is the quarter mile RPM calculator, still TCI, still the same calculator, still the same page, just a different one. So, obviously, here you've got to enter the mile an hour, your tyre height, your rear end ratio, and your trans ratio, and your converter slip, and that will give you your RPM. Now remembering that the turbo 400 in top gear is one is to one, so whatever your whatever your engine's doing in top gear is what your tail shaft will be doing. So here we have. I'm going to do 140 miles an hour. I'm going to run a 28 by probably 10 and a half uh, rag or even a slick with that car. It is possible to run a radial, but with them cars they like to bog and squat, so they don't. That's not as good for a radial as it would be for a rag or a slick, in my opinion. I think separating suspensions a lot better for a radial but we'll get into that a lot further down the track so 28 inches is how tall the tire will be uh, and then the rear end ratio in my diff is 3.07 which would explain why it is so damn slow as a standard car it's a shocking ratio to have in a standard car if you want it to be accelerating well but with the turbo setup it's actually not too bad and with not having overdrive in that turbo 400 3.07 is actually a good gear the rpm at cruise speed will be relatively low which will be nice obviously trans ratio is one because one is to one top gear converter slip would give you more rpm but i'm going to set it at zero hopefully my converter is nice and tight once it's all fully locked up no converter i think actually goes fully locked but just for because I absolutely no have no idea exactly what that number is, will be. I'll just put it at zero for the time being. This is just a guide, and you can see that my tail shaft is going to be doing 5,159 RPM approximately. So we know the RPM that the tail that the tail shaft needs to do to achieve the mile per hour for me at the track. Now we need to find out whether a tail shaft can handle that sort of RPM. So the next calculator I'll go onto is the Spicer page, which is, I have no idea, Spicer.com, and there's a calculator on there for uh, operation safety operation tail shaft. And you can see here, you get to choose your style of tail shaft. So you can see that that's a yoke that would go into the gearbox, and then you've got uni, one piece to a uni. That line there just indicates, you know, infinity or whatever, you know, certain size. So the length is from there to there. You've got to choose your, I'll scroll down, choose your outside diameter and wall thickness. Now I know from the tail shaft shop already that mine's going to be 3.5 round by 095 wall. So you choose that one. And then this is the, the series. 
Now, it makes no difference when you choose series on this calculator. They all do the same thing, but we're using a 1350 yoke on the front, so that'll do 1350. They all, I've checked every single one, and it still comes out with exactly the same calculation. So we just choose the 1350, and now you've got distance between joint centers. And I've got a rough measurement on what it's going to be, so... Um, you know, we don't have an exact measurement because we don't have the flange on the diff yet or anything like that, but I know that it's going to be roughly 55 inches, plus or minus maybe an inch. So knowing all that information, you can punch in the calculate results, and you'll see that the safe operating RPM is 5,000. And then half true critical speed, 3,800 now. The max initial balance, 5,000. These the two other, the half crucial and the max, have a lot to do with the guy balancing the shaft. Um, it can be balanced higher than this, but this is the max initial that you would balance it to. So the shaft, it is possible for the shaft to work higher than this, but you know the shaft build has to go through extensive balancing procedures and stuff like that. Things that are out of my hands. So, but you can just see, I'll just give you a bit of a bit of a show around on the calculators that I've been playing around with and to see that if my shaft is going to be compatible and you know if you've got some sort of a build going on you can play around with them and see if you're going to get away with a single piece because in my mind single piece is far more simple less moving parts and definitely cheaper to build too with less moving parts so we'll uh, get back to the car and get into it yeah, right, hey guys I hope you found that somewhat informative but you did probably notice that those online calculators and the RPM that I require is actually a little bit off and that was my initial initial concern and why I started contacting certain drive line people and drive shaft people just to see what the story was because I did see that over in the USA they're using single piece shafts in the GTO flat out and I'm just like well you know how are they get in the way of it so you know balancing RPM and initial balance RPM and the way they balance it and the and all that sort of stuff goes into it. It's very high tech stuff that's out of my knowledge range. So I've been told that we can get that shaft, the single piece, to work. And for me, it's a no-brainer. You know, like you got a you got a two-piece shaft with all these joints that are going to stuff up and play up. Why not just keep it simple and you know put two uni joints in there and be done with it. Keep it keep it a lot simpler, a lot easier, and a little bit more old school, which I probably like. I think it's going to be fine. The drive shaft shop thinks it's going to be fine. The local drive shaft guy thinks it's going to be fine, so it should be good. But it's always good to talk in with your local guy and see what his his ideas are. And you know, it's definitely not something that's set in stone. There's definitely a lot of different opinions out there. So yeah, get your research up before you give it a go. Now, another thing we're going to have to change is that that back that back yoke on the diff. And I'll show you something. That the back. Donut, as I keep calling them, I don't know what they actually call them, Gildens or some stupid name. Donut. So we're going to be changing from the donut style to this older style. Now this is an M78. What's in the SS is an M80. That is determined by crown wheel. I think it's 7.8 centimetre or inch crown wheel. This is an 8 inch crown wheel, I'd say that's how they determine it. But this is out of like the older, the VT you get these in, which is the older, I think it's 2000 model. IRS Commodores all the way back to like 1990 VQ Statesman which is what this is actually out of and we are going to use this style flange here a lot stronger I won't go into it but once I get this diff out I'll actually be able to do a side by side comparison so the next thing we're going to do I know it's a tail shaft video but we actually have to get the diff out because that that flange has to be changed and it's not just a matter of unrattling it and rattling the new one on. There's actually certain load and there's a cross tube or something the diff guy was telling me that has to be monitored for tension and all this sort of stuff. So another thing that I'm not going to stuff with, I'm just going to take the diff out, take it to him and he can set it all up so it's going to last and, and be right. So we'll crawl under there and we'll start getting this diff out. Back under the car, we have to take this diff out. So all the, the drive shafts have to be undone from the diff here, the 8mm allen keys you can use allen keys and struggle or I um, cut it, cut down an old allen key and put it in the end of an 8mm socket, it makes it a lot easier uh, also 4 bolts around here takes off, takes off the rear sort of hanger for the diff cover and then there's two 17mm bolts on top 
and there's D's 217 on the front and they're from the top so they are hard to get to so I can actually show you where they are once it's out it's probably easier to show you where they are so oh I've already got a spanner up there on there starting to undo the top ones we'll get all this undone and then I've got the jack underneath it ready to lower it down so virtually impossible to try and tie and lapse or anything under here it's quite tight I've only got jack stands so I'll get it out and we'll have a look okay guys got all the dry shaft unbolted. I have got this right hand one zip tied up out of the way so it's not hanging on a ridiculous angle. The exhaust is holding this one up. The four 17mm bolts on the top of und are undone. The four 13mm ones on the back hanger brace here is undone and also little two little 5mm allen keys to slide your ABS sensors out. Get them out of the way. You could undo them up, them up at the plugs but in my experience those plugs go brittle very easily so just take the sensors out hang them up in there until we put the diff back in now everything should be undone to be able to lower this diff down I've got the jack under there and it's just a matter of trying to hold it and let it down Slowly but surely. Alright, now I can slide out of here and I'll show you the comparison between the diffs. Alright, the VZ M80 diff against the VQ Statesman. M78 or M75, what do they call them, Diff? The older ones. Now, these four bosses here are those four 17mm bolts that I was telling you about. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, they're a pain in the ass to get to to get this diff out. Now, one thing I noticed is a normal 17mm spanner, you will not get enough leverage unless, you know, you're like He Man or something like that. But I could not get them undone, so I didn't. I did manage to get a one inch spanner to interlock with the with 17mm spanner like that to get a fair bit more leverage on it so if you're attempting to do a, undo those four bolts that's definitely something to keep in mind use another spanner and interlock it get a little bit more leverage and that managed I managed to get them undone no worries so with that out of the way visually not a lot different on the outside that's for sure they are interchangeable you could actually put this diff in this car using the older ratios and whatever but I like the bigger crown wheel, I like that this diff ratio is 3.07 and also this diff and, it, and most diffs if you notice if you give it a rotate and the other side rotates forward as well you know you know it's LSD and obviously if you ro rotate it forward and the other one goes backwards it's not LSD, it's open so LSD diff slightly bigger crown wheel a little bit beefier than the older one so I'll stick with this lock the gear ratio I just need to put this flange on this diff and like I was telling you before that's a job for the diff shop because there's certain tensions and stuff they need to deal with and they reckon if I just put it on and rattle it on it could damage the races in the bearings and also the, the pinion gear tension on the bearing and all this intricate stuff so easy enough I will take this one off and tap it off and then take this diff into the diff shop and they can change it all over when I pick up my tail shaft and we can get back and Put it all back in. Okay, 27mm nut, rattled that off no worries and then just got the, the rubber mallet and give it a little bit of a tap and a bit of a pull and the, the older flange is off, ready to go to the tail shaft shop, to the diff shop. So yeah, the next clip will be diff finished off and tail shaft arrived so we'll catch up then. Okay, the M80 diff out of the VZ is back from the diff shop. They did put the VT style flange on it and preload that pinion bearing to the right spec. Just left it up to them so it's ready to go back up and in. I probably won't film all that, I'll just get it up in there and we'll have a look once it's back in. Okay, diff went in, super easy. It's actually easier putting an IRS diff in than a normal diff, a normal beam style 
axle. So the 417s on the top, nice and tight. The 413s on the back. All the 8mm Allen keys on the drive shafts and the ABS sensors. So now we can take a look at the tail shaft and look at putting that tail shaft in. And this is the new shaft. Three and a half inches thick. 1350 uni with a cast. 1350 yoke for the turbo 400. Now you can get these in billet. You can get strange ones and really strong ones and everything like that. But at the end of the day, the weakest point is this uni or this coupling here. So there's no use making that bit there a hundred times stronger than that bit there when already a cast one is probably 20 times stronger. So this end of the tail shaft very strong. If anything's going to break, it'll be that uni or that coupling back there. Now that suits me as well because you know if the, this tail shaft is going to break, it's going to be down there, not here. If it was going to, if we put the same uni in here the possibilities of this braking would be equal and then the chances of this falling down and pogo sticking the car is a lot higher. I am going to put a front little tail shaft hoop into just as added protection because the last thing I want to do is something fail and this jam into the road at speed and flick it up like a pole vaulter. So you can see in comparison to that standard shaft of all the going on and how thin it is and I've actually picked both these shafts up and this has the uh, transmission yoke on it and that doesn't and the weight is actually quite similar it's actually very surprising so what we're going to do now is I'm going to get under there and slide it in four bolts under that flange get it in there, rotate it around and make sure that everything fits but yeah she's definitely a, a solid bit of gear okay that's the shaft all installed Put the four bolts on the flange at the back here, tighten them up with a little bit of Loctite as well. And yeah, definitely plenty of clearance. It even even just misses this exhaust, and you've got to remember this is an IRS car, so this tar shaft doesn't move up and down where it sits at the moment, it's where it'll stay. And the two closest points are definitely that exhaust hanger there that you can see, which is this here, and the exhaust here is pretty close too. That can easily be adjusted though. And this exhaust isn't staying like I've probably said a hundred times. This is just going to stay here for the aspirated start, which is coming soon. So yeah, pretty happy with it. Nice and strong compared to the standard one. Get a picture of it spinning. So yeah, it should do the job really well. Very happy. Might even slide down the other end and just quickly show you the other end as well. And this is it, just down the other end in the gearbox. So you can see how it sits in there, give it a bit of a spin. I did notice that they're actually a greasable uni as well, which is pretty awesome. And that looks a little bit wet because I actually sprayed this with a bit of WD-40 just so that that seal didn't get damaged when I slid that yoke in. So yeah, you get the idea. Alright, that'll complete this episode. We've got that tail shaft in and I'm super happy with it. Uh, I'd like to thank... Shane and Dan down at Sunstate Gearbox and Diff out at Cunder Park for putting that shaft together for me and working in with me. Yeah, they're, they're actually a good couple of blokes there to deal with out there. Um, you know, if you ever need any tail shaft work or even gearbox work, yet, yeah, my old VL, VL Commodore that I've got in some of my really old videos, they actually built the gearbox in there as well and they've done a, a lot of diff work for me over the years. Yeah, it's a good, good local company that I like to use, so... I'll throw up a business card for them here as well, just in case you, you need someone to do a bit of work like that for you. Alright, like I said, end of this episode, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Got any questions, throw it in the comments. And uh, if you want to see more of this stuff, uh, subscribe. And, uh, the next episode, we're probably going to look at throwing oil coolers in the front of it, so we can seal that gearbox up, it's built full of oil and then just slowly start ticking away at all the little jobs ready to start it up which should be coming soon and I've also actually got parts coming for the tunnel as well so you might have another episode of the tunnel uh, wedged in there as well so plenty happening, plenty more videos to come so enjoy the rest of your week and uh, we'll see you on the next one thanks for watching mm -hmm.